Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So this presentation will cover uh, the new items for the Intraplex uh, product line for the NAB 2016 show. So at the booth, uh, we will have uh, pretty much all the products available you know, from the product line for demonstration. There are a number of uh, new introductions this year. On the products front, uh, we are introducing IPLink 100P and IPLink uh, MPX. Uh, besides the new products, uh, we have a number of enhancements. Uh, and features uh, on the existing products uh, with new firmware version, uh, new firmware version for IP Link, uh, HD Link, uh, Live Look, as well as uh, NetExpress. Another uh, introduction we are doing this year is a 30 day trial capability with the IP Link uh, features that require a feature key. So the new software version will, uh, will be shipped with a 30 day trial capability for the customers. So the platform continues to expand. IPLink uh, 100P is the uh, new single channel full duplex uh, model similar to IPLink 100, but it has the front panel display, uh, the detailed view meter, LEDs, and GPS timing capability for synchrocast. IPLink MPX is the uh, uh, new product that, that in enables uh, transport of analog FM composite multiplex signal over IP. So there are uh, several benefits. Uh, of transporting MPX in, in some use cases. It enables users to co-locate their baseband processing equipment such as audio processor, RDS generator, etc. at the studio side where the uh, engineers are. You can also save on CapEx uh, in cases when you're distributing the same signal to multiple sites. For example, for SFN application because you only need a single set of equipment at the studio side which in turn simplifies uh, synchrocast operation because the baseband processing delay across those uh, equipment is common to all the sites. You don't have to go and measure uh, the delay and compensate it uh, separately. So there are two modes for MPX. The digital FM MPX uh, is also referred to as AES-192. Uh, this is already supported in our other IPLink products, IPLink 100, 100P, and 200 as software configuration. Analog MPX required a new hardware uh, uh, support and therefore the introduction of uh, IPLink MPX. Now with this introduction uh, we round out our capability of distributing FM composite signal. As far as selecting between AES-192 and the analog MPX mode, if, you're, if your exciter supports um, uh, AES-192 interface uh, and uh, there is a sufficient STL capacity available, uh, AES-192 is a way to go because it provides better signal quality of the because of the all digital path. So this is a full duplex uh, product. Uh, uh, it's got a front panel display uh, as well as detailed view meter LEDs and GPS timing capability in the in, in the back for synchrocast operation. Uh, it does have flexible sample rate configuration based on the FM services you want to transport, so you can optimize the you know van bandwidth. Uh, there are two SCA uh, input ports uh, to mix those channels in in the outgoing uh, MPX uh, signal. There are two inputs and two output uh, uh, ports for MPX signal for redundancy. The system also has the capability uh, to decode the main audio and RDS from either the input or the output MPX signal. And similar to IP link, it has the same capability with respect to the GPIO contacts and the network reliability uh, feature set for reliable transport. There are four feature keys for MPX, uh, stream splicing, live look, and synchrocast are same as uh, other IP-Link products. Dual MPX port is unique uh, to the, the new product and it ena enables the uh, redundancy on the input signal. So on the input side, the system will automatically fail over between the primary and standby. Each input signal has independent level settings. On the output, both those uh, ports are active simultaneously. Each output port also has a independent uh, level setting. The SCA channels can be mixed into either of those output uh, signals or both of those output signals. Uh, this is user configurable. Uh, the decoded main audio is put out on the XLR ports on the back, uh, on the left and right, so it is stereo separated as well as the front monitor uh, port. The RDS information is uh, displayed on the front panel display as well as uh, uh, the web interface. So with analog MPX mode, we support three sampling rates, uh, which should be configured uh, depending on the FM subcarriers, uh, sub subcarrier or the services that you want to transport. There is three sample size resolution 
for each sampling rate, 16 bits, 20 bits, and 24 bits. 16 bits uh, provides acceptable uh, performance. It provides about 90 dB of dynamic range. 20 and 24 bit uh, will provide you a few more dB additionally with a higher data rate requirement. So the table here for analog MPX shows uh, the different uh, configuration uh, for that application. The boxes that are shaded in blue are, are the modes that can be transported over an, over an RFSTL using IP links uh, new data mode capacity. So to transport uh, main audio and RDS, which is the most common configuration, you need minimum 2.2 megabits per second and maximum 3.2 megabits per second with 24-bit transport. Uh, to transport up to SCA1, which is uh, what AES192 transports, you need minimum 2.7 megabits per second. And to transport the entire 100 kilohertz spectrum, you need 3.6 megabits per second. Now AES192 transports up to SCA1 subcarrier. Uh, the uh, data rate uh, for AES192 depends on the sample size uh, resolution that's configured. 24 bits is what uh, you know people generally use. It does provide transparent mode. It requires 4.7 megabits per second. Uh, 16 bits uh, you know provide acceptable performance, and it uh, has uh, significantly reduced uh, data rate requirement. So let's look at uh, some key capabilities of the IP-Link uh, platform, uh, starting with uh, network reliability. Now, these feature sets are common you know, for all the IP-Link products, including the IP-Link MPX. And it starts with three network ports that are available for streaming uh, and management, uh, stream splicing with uh, time diversity and network diversity to protect against uh, packet losses, uh, forward error correction to recover, lost packets, so this is an added layer of reliability on top of stream splicing. If you happen to lose a packet for error correction, you can recover those packets. Uh, on top of that, we have automatic failover between primary, secondary, and backup sources with several options for backup sources to cover all different uh, scenarios. So this is yet another layer of reliability on top of stream splicing and forward error correction. We also have a very uh, deep receive buffer, 512 packet buffers per stream, are allowed to be configured. So depending on the packet time, you can have several minutes of jitter tolerance uh, if, you, if, if you need that. Uh, with release 2.5, we are introducing two new features. Automatic uh, adaptation of receive buffer. Uh, with this feature, the system will automatically adjust the size of the receive buffer based on uh, the continuous measurement it is making for jitter and network. So it will react to the changes in the network condition uh, to enhance the reliability. An on-demand backup stream allows the receiver to automatically call those secondary and backup stream uh, when they are needed, as opposed to having them always on and using up the bandwidth on those backup uh, connections. So this is targeted for uh, users with pay-per-use type connections, such as LTE. So this slide shows uh, the IP-Link's capability uh, to scale the packet loss protection uh, based on the number of networks uh, you have and the quality of the network you have. So for example, if a user has a single network connection uh, over a private network or a managed uh, service uh, type uh, network, uh, you, do you tend to see isolated or random losses because it's a well-managed network. Forward error correction is going to be the most uh, efficient and effective way to protect against uh, packet losses in that condition. If you're using a public network, uh, you know, you tend to see burst losses as well as random losses. For burst losses, forward error correction is not as effective. This is where the user has the option of adding additional stream to the group uh, with a programmable time delay. And that time delay, uh, you know, can be recommended by the Interplex uh, Live Look uh, based on the burst uh, analysis. And if you have more than one uh, network, uh, you can add additional streams to the group for each available network. So you, this way you can scale the protection uh, between, uh, you know, your two IP links uh, with having streams uh, that are time diversity, network diversity, and forward error correction. So this slide shows uh, IP links uh, capability uh, for uh, primary, secondary, and backup uh, a switchover or failover capability. Uh, these sources can come from the same IP link encoder, uh, maybe over a different network connection, backup network connection, or they, uh, the sources can come over uh, from a different IP link encoder located somewhere else. The sources can also come from a third uh, party encoder, maybe a software running on your tablet or, or smartphone using the SIP protocol. And now with uh, release uh, 2.5, uh, it can also come from an internet uh, in a web streaming server using a shoutcast receive streams. When you lose complete uh, network connectivity, the system has the ability to play from the USB playlist or a locally fed audio signal. 
So looking at uh, some of the other key capabilities uh, for IP link uh, on the encoding front, uh, pretty much all the algorithms that you see uh, there are, are supported by our top tier competitors. Opus uh, is the open source algorithm that's, that's been getting a lot of traction. Uh, and even though it's open source, uh, the quality of the software implementation does affect the, uh, the audio quality and uh, uh, broadcasters that have done um, you know, testing of Opus uh, using uh, different codec vendors have told us that uh, we have the best uh, sounding implementation. But by far the biggest differentiator with, the, uh, with encoding uh, is the multi-coding capability or a transcoding capability which allows uh, the same content to be encoded with different algorithms and bit rates simultaneously which opens up a lot of different use cases for IP link. Interoperability uh, is also very important now for the customers. Uh, we IP Link supports uh, standard protocols and standard algorithms, which allows us to work with other hardware and software codec vendors. Being able to transport uh, control along with uh, audio is also critical for a lot of the broadcast application. And IP Link has the capability of transporting both GPIO as well as uh, aux data aligned to the audio spurt. So this uh, slide uh, shows uh, the concept of multi-coding. Uh, typical IP uh, codec uh, vendor will be able to generate multiple streams to different IP destination, but all those streams will be encoded exactly uh, with the same algorithm. With IP link, uh, those streams can be encoded with different algorithms. So for example, you can send an uncompressed stream uh, for your terrestrial users over the STL at the same time send um, you know few compressed streams of the same content for your web listeners or you can send a high fidelity stream over your main network and a, and a low fidelity stream over the backup network across the STL. So this slide shows the IP links uh, capability of uh, transporting control uh, and aux data aligned to the audio spurt. Now the aux data can interface IP link either via RS-232 and now uh, via UDP messages. Uh, so since the control data, that is GPIO data, and as well as the aux data coming from the RS-232 or UDP are packaged in the same uh, packet along with the audio data, they go through the same treatment you know, for, for jitter as well as network reliability. Uh, we are also introducing audio loudness and leveling uh, capability that is integrated into the encoder. Uh, this uh, algorithm conforms to the EBU and ITU standards. In the television world, the standards are uh, used uh, for the COM Act uh, to have consistent loudness between uh, programming and advertisement audio segments. Uh, in the radio world, it's uh, uh, primarily targeted uh, for the web streaming application where the CDN is performing content uh, replacement for local area insertion applications. So in that case, the audio coming out of the encoder uh, needs, to have, be, have, needs to have consistent loudness uh, so that can easily replace a segment. Uh, we are uh, demonstrating this capability at the, uh, at the booth. Uh, so you'll be able to hear the variation in the audio loudness uh, before and after it's been processed. So with the introduction of shoutcast receive streams, it enables uh, an end-to-end -end distribution of audio using content delivery network. Uh, we support 12 shoutcast and icecast streams. So on the encoder side, you can send you know, you know, several streams to the primary server and several streams to the backup server uh, for reliability. Uh, the built-in transcoding and multi-coding uh, capability allows the encoder to send multiple streams of the same uh, content, which will save you uh, on cost uh, for that service from the CDN vendor. Uh, the encoder also has the dynamic metadata insertion capability and the optional EBU loudness uh, algorithm uh, capability. On the decoder, uh, the biggest uh, value add that we bring is reliability. The decoder has the option of uh, configuring uh, three uh, sources uh, for reliability, primary, secondary, and backup, and it will perform the failover and reversion based on the state of the servers. So Interplex Live Look is our uh, PC application uh, that performs uh, uh, packet loss uh, uh, analysis and recommendation on which uh, uh, mitigation technique uh, will be most effective on a network connection. It also has a long-term capability so users uh, can track the SLA if they're using an ISP-based service. And now it has email notification with the latest uh, software version. So the users now have options of getting email alerts uh, when they receive stream experiences uh, alarm conditions. IP Link uh, Scheduler is also a PC application. 
uh, that uh, is used to send scheduled commands to the IP link streams. Uh, it's uh, primarily targeted for uh, program switching based on time of day and day of the week. But you can also use this uh, uh, software for adjusting the protection of an audio stream uh, based on the report generated by Live Look. So if the Live Look indicates that there are you know congestion or a packet losses between five to seven in the evening, uh, you can use this tool uh, to program a different coding rate, uh, you know, reduce coding rate and uh, use the additional capacity for uh, protection. So essentially, you can enhance your reliability using this tool. Uh, moving on to HD Link, uh, there are two main capabilities uh, you know to uh, to remember here. Or one one is a superior RF performance uh, that is enabled by the in integrated five watts of uh, power and LDPC channel coding. And second is a backup capability. So should the RF link degrade, the system can automatically adjust uh, the modem parameters, uh, the QAM rate uh, and the channel coding rate uh, to stabilize the link. And should the link completely fail, it has the option of uh, sending the traffic over a backup IP path. We have a new version uh, for HD link as well. Uh, version 2.6 expands the data rate capability from 1.5 megabits per second to up to 3.2 megabits per second depending on the channel bandwidth uh, and the qualm rate. Uh, the benefit here is to be able to transport um, you know a lot more audio channels across the STL using the advanced IP uh, link compression algorithm. So for example if you use Opus at 128 kilobits per second you know, with 3.2 megabits uh, of uh, IHD link throughput, you can send up to 20 stereo channels. So the so the idea is that by using IP link along with HD link as, as IP radios, it enables uh, the advanced capabilities of IP link, such as compression algorithms, um, uh, networking, synchrocast, etc. So this uh, slide shows uh, IP link uh, being used with HD link for a synchrocast. Uh, application for both the analog uh, and AES audio as well as for analog FM MPX uh, uh, signal type. Uh, moving on to the modular uh, uh, NetExpress uh, and multiplexer product line. Uh, these products have the ability to transport voice uh, data and program audio services depending on the channel cards that are installed in the chassis. Uh, all the products uh, accept the same uh, channel modules. The uh, difference is uh, the network interface card. Uh, Net NetExpress is uh, uh, net network interface card uh, interfaces with both T1 and IP network uh, simultaneously. NetExpress LX interfaces with IP network uh, only, but it uses the same chassis as our T1 access uh, server uh, systems. Uh, so our existing uh, T1 customers uh, can uh, easily migrate uh, to IP-based network by simply swapping out the network card uh, so they get to save their investment in the chassis, the wiring, and the channel cards. We are introducing two new features uh, this year for NetExpress and NetExpress LX. Uh, uh, the first is the new GPIO uh, contact uh, channel module. So this card has uh, 12 inputs and 12 output contacts per card. Each input contact is selectable between wet and dry operation. Each output contact is also selectable between normally open and normally close. Uh, it uses extremely low bandwidth, uh, 64 kilobits uh, uh, per second time slot. Usage can support up to eight cards, so that's 96 contacts in, 96 contacts out. And it works across all the multiplexer platform, including the T1 access and U1 access servers. The other feature we're introducing is the automatic backup head-end capability for NetExpress and NetExpress LX. So with this uh, feature, the remote site systems will automatically call upon uh, the backup system should the main uh, system fail. And because we use the uh, wide area network for failover management, the backup system can be co-located or it can be uh, located geographically uh, dispersed. So thank you.